Hey guys, it's Dawn and I am back today with another watercolor video. So today we are looking at easy mass production featuring watercolor. These are super simple and I know I say it's simple and you guys tell me no it's not. These ones are really easy. All you need is your stamps, some distress ink, and a spray bottle. So I'll show you how to create this series and then I'll also show you how to do another one featuring some gold embossing and some die cutting. These are again really easy to do. You can do a several at a time and they both featured the 2015 4x6 stamp set. So let's go ahead and jump right in. I've already pulled most of the images that I'll need from this stamp set and placed them off to the side. Right now I'm picking up the large solid triangles and we're going to be doing all of our base stamping with the same image and we're going to be stamping this in distress ink in picked raspberry, spiced marmalade, and broken china. So I'm going to create a little grouping of these three triangles. I'm going to stamp them down and I'm going to overlap them because when I spray this with that mister bottle, I want those colors to blend and bleed into each other and create new colors. You'll notice that I'm using the stamp press to do this and that's because I am trying to, um, I'm trying to line these up exactly over each other, but I'm just not very good at um, exactly lining these up. But don't fear because when we spray these, it's going to cause those colors to spread out and bleed and you'll never know that they weren't exactly lined up. Now we can take our mini mister and spritz the image. Now you could use any spray bottle that you have on hand. I just happen to like the amount of water that comes out of this mini mister for this particular image. Now bear in mind, the closer you get to the image, the more forceful that water will come out of the sprayer and when it hits the ink. So you'll get, um, one, you'll get more water on your paper and two, you will push the ink out further because the water is coming out with more force. The further away and the higher you get, the less water you're going to get onto the paper and the more fine mist it's going to create. So I encourage you to play around with the amount of water and the distance from which you spray it. Now all we have to do is let this dry and as it dries it will continue to spread and mix and you'll get some really cool results without having to do anything to it. Once that's dry, we're going to add these lined triangles that are also included in the set in Memories, Dye Ink, and Black. I really love the way that this is going to make those colors seem a little less bright and vibrant and push them to the back. I'm lining this up over that large triangle and then slightly offsetting it. And then I'm going to accent it with the medium sized uh, triangle that's also included in the set. I think this is going to add some interest by breaking it up a little. I, I could have done a large triangle for each one but I just, I wanted to stagger it and add just a little bit of interest so it wouldn't be too monotonous. I like that though this design is graphic, it still feels a little random. While I've got that black ink out, I'm gonna go ahead and stamp my sentiment. I'm using this bold cheers that's also included in the set. Although this is a New Year's set, I've included separate sentiments in here, like class of and cheers, and then separately for all you do, so that you can use this all year long. And I've chosen this bold sentiment because I think it really supports this graphic. I did experiment with a thinner font um, and I just didn't think that it supported the image itself well. And I'll show you that here in a little bit. It wasn't horrible, but again, this thicker font is just much better for this image. So you can see mass producing these is really easy. I cut several watercolor panels, did the exact same steps, and then die cut the stag head from our stag trio die out of watercolor paper as well. You can also see that thinner font and how much better that thicker font looks. I wanna keep these nice and flat, so I'm gonna use the Tombow Extreme Tape Runner to adhere these watercolor panels to their card bases. This is an extremely permanent, strong adhesive, so it's perfect for using, just in case your panels may have warped at all. And I'm using the multi matte medium to adhere the stag heads to the center of the card. Again, I want to keep these nice and flat, so this is the perfect medium to use. And I'll just repeat this for all of my cards. Now, if you're like me, mass production doesn't really excite you because um, I get bored creating the same thing over and over again. So I did pick out a couple different base card colors and I trimmed my panels down to either four by five and a quarter inches or four inches by five and a half inches. This just switches things up a little bit so that I don't get bored with it. And that's really it. See, I told you these were simple. So here's a look at them matted on Dove Gray, Sweet Gelato, and Black Cardstock. I told you this was a super easy, mass producible watercolor holiday card, and it's in a non-traditional color palette with a graphic feel. So let's take a look at the next one. This one features a lot of gold embossing that actually turns into almost a foil look. I'm starting with a watercolor panel here, and because we're gonna be doing a lot of embossing, I'm using an anti-static pad to rub over the entire surface of this. 
And then I'm going to take some Versamark and that lined pyramid image and I'm going to start stamping out my pattern. Now I am going to use my grid mat here to try and make sure that my um, lines are straight here. It's I guess it's not really that big of a deal, but since I'm going to try to create a pattern, I want to try to make sure that everything is stamped straight and nothing's crooked. Then I'm going to lay down some scratch paper and I'm going to pour my embossing powder over the area that I just stamped. Now this is a gold embossing powder that I am testing right now. So I actually really love it and I am strongly considering carrying it. So if you really like the shine on this one, let me know in the comments below and um, I will make sure that we go ahead and pick this product up. Now I'm going to go ahead and stamp down another triangle here and the reason that I'm applying my powder and then stamping again is because I can't see where I've stamped previously because that Versamark is a clear sticky ink. So this way if I stamp and then sprinkle my powder on and then stamp again, I'll be able to see where I've previously stamped and I can make sure to try to get this lined up and get that pattern to look seamless. Now each time I'm going to apply my powder, shake off the excess, and then stamp my image. Here I'm choosing to use the medium um, little pyramid image there and I'm lining it up so that the, the uh, horizontal lines do meet up with each other. I'm going to try to make sure that they meet or match as much as possible. And there are some areas where I kind of mess up and they're not quite uh, connecting so you could just use a Versamark pen to add in that extra little bit and then re-sprinkle with powder and you'll never be able to tell that you didn't quite connect them. So just continue to stamp, sprinkle, and then shake off the excess until you've covered most if not all of your paper. This is what we're going to die cut our stag heads from. So the more cards you'll be making, obviously the larger a panel that you'll want to create. Uh, here I think I got six heads out of this particular um, panel. And then you'll just use your heat tool to completely melt all of the embossing powder. So as this melts, it will turn from that flat brownish color to this high shine gold. Remember, it helps to heat your gun up for a couple seconds before you bring it to your paper and make sure you keep your gun moving while you're heating it. And here you can see that gorgeous high shine this embossing powder has. And now we can create our soft wash in the background. So I'm laying some broken china distress ink onto an acrylic block. And then I'm going to use my number eight round brush to start applying some water to this panel. Now normally if I were to do a watercolor wash, I would completely wet the entire background. I don't want this to be an even wash of color. I want it to be very um, variegated. <laughs> I want it to be variegated, but still soft. I want I want some heavier color in some areas, and I want some lighter colors in others. So I put down water in the center of the paper, and I've dropped in some ink. Now I've picked up more water with my brush, and I'm spreading it out in areas. I want it to stay strong in the center of some of these triangles and then in other areas I want it to bleed out into clear water. So really again here there's no rhyme or reason I know I say that a lot but there really isn't. Um, I'm kind of laying down some color watching what it does. If it's too um, too even in an area for me then I'll add some more water to spread it out or more color. So here is where you get to just really play and experiment with the amount of color that you're putting in areas. And remember, 90% of the time watercolors look much better when they're dry than when they're wet. So once you're done, you'll just let this dry and then we can come in and do our die cutting. Again, we're going to be using the head from the Stag Trio die. Um, I just like to be able to get as many cards as possible out of the same supplies and usually when I'm creating, um, ideas just kind of spin off into each other and that's how we got two sets of cards from this one video. I, I started out with this card and then somehow morphed into the card that I showed you before. So I decided to just keep the camera rolling. Now you're going to want to cut as many of these out of your panel as you can. And I've noticed that for some reason this die, the cutting plates, 
and the watercolor paper are almost like the magical thickness that as you run these through it flattens out those embossing lines and it looks more like gold foil than gold embossed because it becomes completely flat and smooth it's it's actually really cool and i was quite happy with it i don't know if i could recreate it with any other type of paper i'll have to play around with some of my shims and stuff but for some reason like i said the magnetic platform here, the two cutting plates, the car, the watercolor paper, and the steel rule die is like the perfect thickness. It just flattens that out and turns it into like foil. So just keep running that die back and forth through your die cut machine until you've cut as many of these stag heads as you can from that watercolor panel. And you should end up with several of these heads that are all the same but slightly different. I wanted to keep the rest of the card very clean and elegant so that those stag heads would really shine. So I've cut a card base down to three and a half by five inches from our Dev Grey cardstock, and I've heat embossed a sentiment from our heartfelt holiday stamp set in that same gold embossing powder. Now I'm using foam tape to adhere the stag heads to the center of the card, and really that's all these cards need. So there you have another idea that incorporates watercoloring that's also easy to mass produce. I think that both of these sets of cards are just stunning. One is very soft and elegant and the other one is a bit more graphic and vibrant. But I think either way you go, you can't go wrong because they're both non-traditional and they're both a lot of fun. I really hope you liked today's video and hopefully it gave you some ideas for incorporating watercolor into your mass production. I've picked out some other watercolor videos that you can check out up there in the upper left and right. Don't forget, you can find all of the featured WPlus9 supplies at WPlus9.com. And you can find out more about this project as well as any of our others, more ideas and inspiration, and uh, more about all the supplies that I use at our blog on stampawaywithme.blogspot.com. Again, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day. I will see you next time. Bye.